Well, it's finally over. The days that we lived with the casting rumors of the Fantastic Four are now behind us as Marvel Studios has officially announced the cast for the Fantastic Four in the most chill way ever. Really nonchalantly on Valentine's Day nonetheless they really don't want people to go see Madam Web today instead they would rather you stay home and think about the official Fantastic Four cast for the MCU. And if you don't have any Valentine's Day plans this is a great Valentine's Day gift from Marvel Studios. We also have a new official logo for the Fantastic Four and the MCU as well. If you did not see Marvel Studios posted it on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter, pretty much all social media and they gave us a poster with the announcement of the cast as well they stated happy valentine's day from marvel's first family pedro pascal vanessa kirby Ebon Moss Bakrach and Joseph Quinn are the Fantastic Four. Marvel Studios, the Fantastic Four in theaters July 25th, 2025. And of course, just to be very specific in case you are confused about who is playing what, Pedro Pascal is, of course, Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic. Vanessa Kirby is Sue Storm, aka the Invisible Woman. Joseph Quinn, who a lot of people know from Stranger Things, is Johnny Storm, the brother, of course, of Sue Storm and also the Human Torch, and Ebon Moss Bakrach is going to be playing Ben Grimm, aka The Thing. And yes, they did push the release date back for the Fantastic Four a little bit. It is now coming out July 25th, 2025. And according to Deadline, Marvel Studios just moved up the Thunderbolts to the start of summer on May 2nd of 2025. So the Thunderbolts comes out in May, and only two months later, the Fantastic Four will release in the summer as well, both in 2025. So right away, please let me know what you think about the official cast for the Fantastic Four in the comments down below. I will say kudos to the insiders who have been reporting Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm for what seems like forever now. Many of them have also been reporting that Joseph Quinn would indeed be Johnny Storm and that Ebon Moss Bakrach would indeed be the thing, and they were right. So although we did deal with our Kylo Rens, our Ryan Goslings, for the most part, the rest of the cast was pretty solid for a pretty long time when it came to the rumor department. And this makes you start to wonder, are the rest of the leaks that we've heard about the Fantastic Four true? Could the plot details that we've heard about the movie be true? Obviously, the answer now is yes. Yes, since these insiders were right about the cast of the Fantastic Four for a decent amount of time now, if we exclude Pedro Pascal, because that was pretty much confirmed right after the insiders mentioned it by the major outlets such as Deadline. Then you had the SAG confirm it, then they took it down. Then they had Matt Shackman create an Instagram and basically confirm it again, but... He then took it down, and everybody assumed that Marvel Studios was planning some like super huge announcement, saving it for San Diego Comic-Con so they could go all out, but they just nonchalantly released it on Valentine's Day, just announcing it on social media, not even doing a video, just giving us a poster. Which, hey, I'm not complaining, but it is not a big SDCC announcement. It was pretty subtle. In fact, if you weren't looking for it and had notifications on, you might miss it. But let's talk about, one, what the poster shows, and two, what we have heard so far about the plot of the fan. Fantastic Four. Now, right away, I can say that we have heard that this film could take place in the past, perhaps in the 60s. And based off of kind of what they're wearing in this poster, it seems like that could be the case. One for starters, if we take a look at the new logo, it does seem very retro. And I absolutely love it. I think this is an incredible logo, and I think it's an incredible idea to have them be based in the 60s. Many insiders have reported this, but what's really interesting is that one of the insiders that reported that the film could take place in the 60s was Grace Randolph. And also in her report, she stated that Marvel Studios might make the Fantastic Four in another universe, not the main MCU sacred timeline that we know everybody else to be in so far. So much like we were introduced to Earth 838 in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, while Doctor Strange, America Chavez, and Wanda were only there for a short period of time, as well as other universes as well, this movie, The Fantastic Four, based off of the rumors that we heard before that are now ending up to be true, 
true, the entire movie could take place in another universe, which is honestly a brilliant idea. We're kind of going to get this in Deadpool 3, except we're really going to get Deadpool traveling throughout the entire multiverse. And we've seen the Fox X-Men universe before, of course, we've seen the MCU, obviously, but we haven't seen a completely different universe and seen an entire movie take place in that universe. And it's brilliant. It really is a brilliant idea, and it seems like it is likely to happen now. But of course, you might rightfully ask, well, if it's going to take place in another universe, how exactly are they joining the MCU? Well, realize the MCU now really is the MCM, the Marvel Cinematic Multiverse. And just because certain characters might not exist in the actual sacred timeline of the MCU doesn't mean that they're not in the MCU. But more specifically, how do they get to the main universe? Because we know that this Fantastic Forecast is not just for one movie. We know they're here for probably at least 10 years. Plus, not to mention other rumors that we heard state that Reed Richards and Sue Storm are already going to be married in the Fantastic Four film, and they could even have babies at this point in time. Maybe Franklin, maybe both Franklin and Valeria. Well, according to two old reports, there are two different ways that they could get to our universe. We know that Galactus is going to be the villain of the Fantastic Four film, and we know that there is going to be at least one Herald of Galactus in the Fantastic Four film. We've heard that there could be two, but you've probably heard by this point in time that Marvel Studios might be planning on introducing a female version of the Silver Surfer, and it sounds like this really will take place in another universe, so I'm okay with that, because once they come to the main sacred timeline of the MCU, whatever that's going to look like after the events of Avengers Secret Wars, that's where they can bring in the classic Silver Surfer, Norrin Rad. But again, how do they get to the main MCU? Well, one report states that at the end of the film, they actually aren't going to kill Galactus. Or I should say, stop Galactus, because there are many times that they don't kill him, but they do stop him in the comics. And at this point in time in the movie, where they can't defeat Galactus and the Silver Surfer, one of two things happens. One is the TVA could show up and save them and bring them to a neutral space, maybe at the TVA, where they are gathering many different heroes throughout the multiverse to form their big multiversal Avengers team to take on Kang the Conqueror and all of his variants. This apparently is going to start happening in Deadpool 3. The TVA is going to realize that the multiverse is in jeopardy and they need a bunch of heroes to come together to fight them. And we kind of got a glimpse of that with the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer. So that's one option. The TVA could appear in the Fantastic Four's universe, basically say, come with me if you want to live, and they take them and their universe is destroyed. Now, I'm assuming if they have kids at that point in time, they would take their kids as well. And if anyone is married or has a girlfriend like Ben Grimm has Alicia Masters, I'm assuming they'll be taken as well. Maybe on the girlfriend part, they could give him a new girlfriend in the main timeline that they end up with after. But they will for sure take their kids. They're not going to leave their kids there to die. But the other option is that Reed Richards is the smartest man alive. And perhaps in realizing that he is not going to be able to defeat Galactus and or the Silver Surfer, he himself creates a multiverse traveling device and he gets his family out of there. Perhaps in hopes that he could go back in time one day and save his universe. But in doing so, he realizes that it's not Galactus or the Silver Surfer's fault that the multiverse is falling apart. It's Kang's fault or some outside source. And that's where the multiverse Avengers team comes in and somehow finds them. Again, most likely, probably, the TVA seeking out these heroes is how they will kind of get in touch with all of the other multiversal heroes. And again, I honestly think this is a brilliant idea. Give us the perspective from another universe, not just the main timeline. But again, let me know what you think about this cast. We've had a bit to think it over now. Pedro Pascal was announced not too long ago, but by now fans have had a chance to wrap their head around this. And of course, Course we've known about Vanessa Kirby, Joseph Quinn, and Ebon Moss Bakrach for a long time now. So let me know what you think about the official cast of the Fantastic Four in the MCU. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Leave all your thoughts in the comments down below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you can stay up to date on the MCU and the Fantastic Four. And if you subscribe and leave a comment, you're automatically entered in our giveaway for a chance to win a PS5, an Xbox Series X, some Marvel Legends items, or some DC items. The winner gets to pick one item, and we pick one winner at the end of each month. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.